Welcome back, DJ Vic Vapor with you. Logic Pro 10, beginner's course, lesson four. So let's take a look at the main window and then we'll take a look at a few of the features as we move forward here and uh, get to know Logic Pro 10 a little bit better. So this is our main window. You can see I've loaded a track here, a little drum loop, and we've got a vocal track right there. So along the top is our header, and you can see we have several different uh, buttons here. We've got a library, inspector, toolbar, quick help guide, smart tools, I'm sorry, smart controls, mixer, editor, then you've got rewind, fast forward, stop, play, and record. And then right here you've got your heads up display, all your pertinent information about key, BPM, where you're at in the bar, where the playhead, playhead currently is at, and your signature, your beat signature, your 4-4. We've got a cycle or loop feature, tuner, solo, and our count in. So if you want to if you're trying to play a live instrument in and keep time with the project, you can hit count in. It'll count in for you as the metronome starts. List editors, notepads, Apple loops, and browsers. And we'll break a lot of these down in uh, further lessons as we go. But for now, just to get familiar with the header, I wanted to give you a kind of a, a guide right there is your header in Logic Pro 10. This guy down here is our main window, the main body. This is where we'll be assembling and pretty much doing all of our work right here in this window. And you've got your track selected and your main window. So what will happen as you add more and more instruments and go through the project, it will build up right here and become you know, your list of tracks and I'll show you different ways to minimize and, and maximize your screen real estate as we go forward. So let's take a quick look at, since we're looking at the header here, let's start from left and work our way to the right. Um, let's take a look at the library. So if you, I click the library, immediately, depending on which track I have selected, it's very important to understand that, especially if you have multiple tracks. So if we've got warm vocal selected, it's going to give me a different set of presets and options to look at and use, all pertaining to vocal. If I go to Big Room, now we're looking at presets that are available throughout the, the drum sounds, basically. So we'll be able to go through here, and I can actually just open that guy up here. So depending on which channel, we have selected makes the difference. All right, so that is library. Let's look at inspector. Inspector, again, depending on which one we have selected, is going to display for us I had those closed. So it's going to display all the pertinent information for that particular track. You can see here it's going to tell us keys, you know, transpose, regions, mute, loop, and you've even got the quick help guide. I tend to keep this turned off just because throughout the project that thing's always kind of distracting up on the left there. It gets in my line of sight. Um, but once you minimize all that, you further down here you've got the... Uh, actual you know levels and then we've got a list right here of our uh, different smart controls which we'll be taking a look at here shortly so we can adjust our output level for each individual track here if we wanted to to have them sitting right in the mix we can mute or solo we can add different effects by using our effects window here, it gives you all the different effects built in that we can grab and pull into that channel. 
similar to what we've already have pre-assigned for us here on the uh, drum channel. So let's take a look at smart controls. That's this guy right here. Smart controls, as long as we have a channel selected that needs a smart control. Sometimes if it's a blank channel, of course, nothing's going to come up. Smart controls are going to be controls that are, you know, going to allow us to shape the sound of that particular channel. And if you look here, we're working obviously with some compression, EQ, and some delay. But if we go over here and we click compressor, There we go, channel EQ, let's do EQ. So we do EQ, let me minimize this guy for us. What you'll see is, as I adjust stuff here, everything corresponds with it up here. Let me get rid of this, let's try try this guy and we go on this channel maybe get a little bit better deal here so we've got some different effects here uh, let's see what it does for compressor give you a little bit better idea what I'm trying to show you here is these are just basically overall controls for the finer points on each individual item so let's say uh, what have we got here Compressor. Delay. There you go. That's a good example. So you can see here under the effects, if I take kit delay and move that knob, it's making the adjustment in the unit itself, in the actual effects unit itself for stereo delay and reverb. And each one will correspond to that particular item. Reverb, you can see some movement happening here. And essentially that is the smart controls. So you've got your library, your inspector, and your smart controls. This little question mark, of course, is our help guide, which I minimized earlier because, like I'd mentioned, it kind of, for me personally, it's a decision just to kind of keep it out of my line of sight. And what do we, I think maybe I skipped over that guy. So we've got the toolbar here, which when highlighted and clicked on, it's going to open up a variety of other features for us that exist right here and I'll dig into each one of those a little further as we go in the next lesson or so. Right here next to smart controls, let's take that off, let's take the inspector off, we've got the mixer so we click on that guy and it's going to give us our individual mixing channels to be able to adjust volumes, pans, and uh, different things right here. We've got the master, you can adjust it's going to give you the list of whatever channel you're working with up here as well. This is going to be our editing tools, our editors. And they're going to come available for us and allow us to have all the different options to edit the sound and shape it in any way we'd like. You've got your snare, kick, and clap adjustments here hi-hat cymbals, percussions, things like that. You can adjust swing, fills. You can even lock them into place once you've got them where you like them. Eighth or sixteenth notes, open up some details, take a look, you know, a little bit, a little bit better flexibility on how you want it shaped, humanize, all kinds of really good stuff. We're going to get into some of this. I'm just kind of browsing through it real quick here, so bear with me. But let's move on to the next lesson and continue down uh, left to right here and explore the rest of the, uh, the header.